Bill, we don't know that it's all about keeping them off your back for the great tax dodge that Microsoft, Google, and the other major corporations are known for using double, triple uh, Dutch, double, triple Irish techniques. My only prayer is that the EU finally cracks down on these gangsters and makes them pay their fair share of taxes. I am sick and tired of hearing one thing come out of their mouth while they do another. It's as simple as that. So if you want to talk about any of these topics, I pity you because it means you're as agitated as I am. And the phone number is 855-400-7282. Let's see what people are calling about. WMAL, Stephen, welcome to the uh, Savage Nation. What's on your mind? Well, if you don't think that Hillary significantly added to her resume by being Secretary of State, her resume is first lady, same as Michelle Obama. They threw her under the bus last time for Barack, and now they'll do this. As soon as Michelle says she wants to run, they'll throw her under the bus, too. So you think Michelle is running to be pre- is going is to run for what? President. Yeah, but she hasn't entered the race yet. How can she do it so late? Because they'll toss Hillary under the bus as soon as she does. No, but what? Isn't there some deadline? Doesn't she have to start announcing? Uh, yeah. And by the way, how does her going to England and speaking in front of a radical Muslim s- a girls' school help her resume in America? How does that work? <clears throat> well, that doesn't help the resume. But you ask what her end game is. I think the end game is her running and getting the Obama name on the ticket again. I don't think so. I think that if Michelle Obama runs for anything, she's going to run for the Senate here in California. That would be my guess. And that's an easy, that's a slam dunk. This is a one-party communist dictatorship under Jerry Brown. So uh, they, they could do anything they want. They, they don't even have to have elections in California anymore. There's no need for an election. They can turn the water off of a town if they want. They can tax you any amount they want. They can give free tuition to illegal aliens if they want. It's great being king. Jerry Brown always wanted to be king. He comes from a uh, Jesuit background, and as a Jesuit, he has these de- these tendencies towards uh, sort of a dictatorship. This is that simple, and we're living in a dictatorship. KSFO, Adam, welcome to the Savage Nation. Hi, Michael. I had a couple of uh, points I wanted to talk about. One was um, the transgender agenda. That apparently, uh, a couple of days ago, uh, there had been a boxing match between a transgender uh, female and a, ma- a female. So it was basically entered into the female you know, and and who who won? I missed that one. Well, the uh, the male, the former male won because the victim. Oh, the former male won because she basically had a a male body. Yeah, basically. And the female who lost, who was actually critically injured, uh, said. That Whoa, she- that's terrible! I didn't know that they're doing that now. They're entering the rings as a transgendered woman, and they're fighting women. That's the scu- That's really a trick. That's using the trick of uh, the transgender political agenda to uh, to uh, basically uh, hurt women. Yeah, yeah, incredible. Where was, the, where was this fight? You know, I'm a sports fan in, in boxing. I will not watch women fight. I can't watch women fight. I don't like watching it. Yeah, I agree. Does, does that make me, make me sexist? <laughs> I cannot watch women hitting each other. I don't like seeing them punching each other in the breasts. How do you like that? It makes me, this, it makes me uncomfortable. But anyway, so what's your point? Well, that was all. It was just, just, a, it was just a bit of news on that. But also, where, where was this fight, Adam? I caught it on, on YouTube. Um, it was on a, on a channel I was watching, and I, uh, it was basically held up in, as a... You know what a real pay-per-view would be, big winner would be? It would be Bruce Jenner fighting um, Madeleine Albright. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, I, I would, they would have to even the odds out, because Madeleine Albright's much older than Bruce Jenner. I would say whatever her name is, Caitlyn Jenner, in a matchup against Madeleine Albright and, let's say, uh, the Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, like two against one. Uh, who do you think would win that one? Uh, I'd go with Madeleine Albright. <laughs> God, yeah, she's meaner. Absolutely. And, and she could probably hit him with a brisket from which he would never recover. But, Michael, I have one other point I wanted to make with, with uh, the sexualizing of children. I don't know if many of the listeners are uh, aware of this, but it's actually uh, on YouTube, again, you can actually type in Walt Disney and sexual imagery or hidden imagery. And for many, many movies from Lion King way back to Snow White, uh, the, the animators have kind of drawn in words or there have been a few frames per second of genitalia and kind of, you know, stuff like this, uh, you know, words spelling out... Uh, God, I, it goes that far back. So when I was doing coloring books at five, I was getting sexualized? 
<laughs> when I was coloring, when I was coloring in Mickey's ears, I was already being sexualized. Yeah, I mean, your eyes—you're uh, not registering it, but your brain's registering. Uh, no wonder I have problems this uh, to this day and age. Uh, I used to like coloring in Mickey Mouse's ears and Donald Duck's bill. I would make a yellow. I didn't know they were teaching me some perverted lesson. That's no, true, and it's amazing. <laughs> oh God! You, you wouldn't see it if something. No, I, I don't doubt it. I mean, look who runs Disney right now. Look what they did to the great Disney name. Take a look at what they do to their workers. Take a look who's the head of Disney. I mean, nothing shocks me anymore. Adam, I'm going to send you a free copy of Countdown to Mecca. You know why? It is a testosterone-driven book that will raise your testosterone no matter, your, no, no, no matter what your gender is. It will even raise the testosterone of transgendered if they were to read Countdown to Mecca. By the time they're through, they may decide to give up their transgendered identity and go back to being a male. Stay, stay. Oh, I feel giddy because I, the MRI was so freaking me out. I was so freak showed about it. I knew, it was like coughing to me. End the line, death. I was going to bring up a topic of death, but I'm, I'm not ready for it. It's just not a good topic for right now. I spoke to a friend of mine who's, uh, you know, about my age. He doesn't know what's going to be done with his remains if and when he dies because he doesn't think he's going to die. So I said, you know, I don't know anybody my age who's actually made any plans for that day because none of the people I know actually believe they're going to die. And so I would say that my generation actually comes from one of the most, I don't know the right word, but a weird generation. You see, when my father came over from Europe. Do you know the first thing he joined was a burial society? Because they had to know these Europeans, they were way ahead of the curve. They, they were not afraid of death. They didn't welcome it, but they understood they would die one day. So the first thing they wanted is a piece of real estate in which to be buried. So they joined a burial society. I, I didn't understand it. But now I'm an older guy. I still don't know what I'm going to do. I haven't made a decision. And I don't know anybody my age. You ask them, they say, oh, I don't know. I don't want to talk about it. So it dawned on me that my generation is filled with people who think they're immortal. We're actually in a, in a class by ourselves. None of us actually believe that we're going to die. You could say we're the most egotistical generation that ever lived. And on that pleasant note, I'll take a break and be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-Y-C-O-I-N. It is the Savage Nation. I have some good news for those of you who have children or you yourself who have applied for the Savage scholarships i'm giving away a hundred thousand dollars twenty thousand to each of five twenty yeah we found the five winners after going through seventeen hundred applicants over the last months it's been on a much bigger job than i ever thought it would be we found five very talented loyal american patriotic americans and we will be announcing the winners i think on july 2nd they probably know who they are by now because we've asked them to send a picture of themselves but I will announce it on the show on July 2nd. I, I live up to my word the best I possibly can. And although I am not Bill Gates giving away $20 million, $100,000 is still a lot of money, especially $20,000 to each student. So you'll, you won't believe some of these essays, how good they are. 855-400-7282. KKOB Radio. Cheryl, go ahead, please, on the issue of death. Uh, you say, yeah, I, I wanted to tell you that about five years ago when I was 50, I decided that um, instead of getting cremated, I was going to dedicate my, donate my body to science. There's a great program where when you die, they send somebody to pick up the body. But, but why, do you, why do you posit the idea that there's only a choice between cremation, burial, or uh, be, cr being, between cre cremation or, or, or giving away your body to science? I mean, there are four... I would say several billion people, they would not consider cremation. Well, I think that's probably true, but I might... Do you, think, do you think it's selfish not to give your body away at your death? Do you, are you, uh, is, that, is that your view? Yeah, I didn't catch what the beginning. Do you think it's selfish of people who do not give away uh, various body parts when they die? No, I don't think it's selfish. Because as sure as I'm standing here, watch what happens. The radical left will soon make you feel guilty for, for being cremated or buried without giving away healthy body parts. You wait and see. They're going to claim they own your body at death. I mean, if Obama can push a death tax, why can't he push a, push a death tax on the human body 
at death. Why can't he do that? Why stop him on his agenda? Anyway, so you decided to give your body away. Aren't you worried? I, are you that positive that when you, quote, die, there's no connection whatsoever to the body that has served you your whole life? I'm positive. How are you positive? Um, it's a spiritual thing. And I think that no, I, I and by the way, I'm not here. I'm not here to be a wise guy. I'm not trying to challenge your view. I'm trying to I'm trying to uh, work through this because I'm not so sure. It has to do with faith. And I think that when you're dead, you're dead. And, you know, you're not in your body anymore. And I want to give I want to donate my body to science because I I think that um, doctors need to learn. What, what if science wanted to use your female body part for a male? Would you find that? acceptable no i haven't well now i'm raising another issue tied into today's political world maybe they'll start to say we want to harvest uh, the genitalia of dead people so we can make so many other uh, individuals happy in their lives i mean it's unlikely that they'd want an older person's genitalia but nevertheless it opens up an ethical question i think worth discussing well the outfit that i've talked to you know that's not something that they have said that they use it for and it's not organ donation you send your body so like they sell your knees to a medical school so that the so doctors can learn surgeons can learn how to operate you you don't mind the thought that your body will be put into an anatomy laboratory not at all I oh boy you know i look hey to each his own but i i think that that would be very very shocking to uh, several billion people on the planet it violates the Jewish religion, it violates the Muslim religion, it probably violates the Christian religion, and, and yet you yourself, are you religious? I am, and it's, it does not violate the Christian religion. I'm not going to... Uh, are you sure of that? Yeah, uh, yeah. Are you sure of it? Well, I'm not here to challenge your beliefs, but I would say that I'm not so sure you're, you're correct in that analysis. Well, hopefully you'll be around for quite a number of years, and I have Countdown to Mecca to give you while you're still with us, because I'm sure you're, you'll enjoy reading the novel. It will increase your testosterone levels, even if you're a woman, because it's so fast-paced, written by yours truly, Michael Savage. I'll be right back. Be here or be nowhere. This is the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Extra hero of that of Italian families protest forced cross-dressing of school children by perverts in the schools themselves. I told you from the beginning that was never about gay rights. It was never about an oppressed minority. It simply wanted equality. It was always about dominance. And we are paying the piper right now because of our tolerance. Parents from the north of Italy have organized a massive demonstration called Defend Our Children Against Gender Ideology in Schools, which will be held this Saturday in the St. John Lateran Square in Rome. What is it about? They're protesting Italian educational programs which are meant to blur the sexual identity of young children. Did you hear what the vermin are doing? In the northern Italian city of Trieste, parents are in an uproar over a taxpayer-funded elementary school program which includes dressing little boys as girls and girls as boys to overcome so-called gender stereotypes. The perverts have taken over every aspect of every Western culture, which, by the way, is why ISIS is rising around the world. Make no mistake about it. ISIS is a counterpoint to these psychotics. You don't understand that. I do. I have a global perspective. I have a mystical perspective. I have a godly perspective. And I am telling you there is a reason ISIS is making gains. It's because of the vermin who have penetrated our culture and destroyed it from within. Schools are calling the exercise the game of respect, which purportedly adopts many guidelines from the European standards on sex education attributed to the World Health Organization. You know who they are, don't you? You know about the perverts from Brussels, don't you? With the alleged child sex slaves that they hold around Europe. You haven't heard about that? What do you think? They're all clean as the driven snow? Listen, there's more. The so-called perverted game of respect consists in a box containing several cards 
presenting the figures of different working roles, male and female housewives and husbands, male and female plumbers and firefighters, with the figures represented in exactly the same way to show that males and females are completely interchangeable. There is also a card from the perverts with a game called If He Were She and She Were He, where boys and girls are expected to exchange the clothes they are wearing in the classroom. The boy dresses as a girl and the girl dresses as a boy. And then 